So what we're going to do today, we're going to run uh, a marathon. And each two speakers are going to speak about yes and no, trying to convince us of their opinions. Okay? So we're going to try to find out if that is really going to be really something that we say at the end of it, yes. Okay? Or no, maybe. Never know. Okay. So I have the honor of uh, presenting the first speaker of the day. And uh, on the yes side, Dr. Ammar Al-Kashmiri, he's going to speak to us about the CT for cervical spine injury yes uh, section. Dr. Ammar practices both emergency medicine and sports medicine in the Sultanate of Oman. He completed his residency training in emergency medicine in 2005 and fellowship training in sports medicine in 2007. Very energetic guy from Miguel. He obtained the American Board also of Emergency Medicine certification in 2007. Uh, he became a fellow of the American College of Emergency Physicians in 2012. He is currently practicing as a senior consultant physician at the emergency department in uh, Khawla Hospital, the National Trauma Center in Oman. So I would like to welcome Dr. Kashmiri. And welcome to the fulcrum session. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Osama. So in the next uh, few minutes, I'm going to convince you that you should be ordering CT spines for your uh, C-spine injury. And that's going to be my objectives. And you should not be ordering plain films. And before I go further, I just want to say hard luck to my opponent because he has nothing to argue with. <laughs> OK, so uh, just to be clear what we're debating here. So we're not debating the patients who uh, are requiring surgery. These patients are unstable. You cannot hear me? Okay. So uh, patients who are unstable and require surgery will end up having a CT after they complete their operative care. Patients who are, uh, have multiple trauma and they require a pan-CT, they're going to get a CT C-spine uh, automatically as part of the package. What we're debating are the less severe trauma patients uh, with low index of suspicion. All right, so let's see why it's a bad idea for you to get plain films. So uh, first of all, it takes time. And it's more expensive. And most importantly, they actually miss injuries. So is that convincing enough? No. So let's dig in the literature and try to back this with evidence. Uh, a study published in the Journal of Trauma uh, about 10 years ago tried to answer this question. So in this study, they included all trauma patients who could not be cleared by the nexus criteria. The gold standard was evidence of injury uh, during the entire hospitalization. What they found that CT has 100% sensitivity. Plain films have a sensitivity of 45%, very, very low. And they actually missed more than 50% of significant C-spine injuries. So these are very important findings. In conclusion, CT outperformed plain radiography. So let's say this is the worst case scenario, okay? So what is the best case scenario? A study published uh, in the annals in 2001 uh, by the Nexus group, uh, just a, a year after the Nexus uh, study came out. So they reanalyzed patients from the Nexus study. They had 818 patients with C-spine injuries. 498 of these patients had C-spine injuries, but 320 of these patients had missed injuries. Now, they looked at these patients, and they ended up excluding 75% of these patients. Why? Because they said they did not have perfect plain films. So they, what they end up analyzing is the 581, and they came up with a sensitivity of 85%. And 85% is still pretty low, right? So what did they do to get around this? They used the negative predictive value, which is uh, reported almost 100% in their study. Now let's talk a bit about NPV. So NPV is predicated on disease prevalence in the studied cohort. If prevalence or pretest probability is very low, then your NPV will be amazing. What is the cohort of interest? What is the prevalence? So the cohort of interest here is acute alert trauma patients who are injured in the past 48 hours, and they are in a stable condition, just we as we uh, mentioned earlier. So the prevalence uh, from the, if you look at the Canadian C-spine study, the prevalence is about 2%. If we look at the Nexus uh, study, the, the prevalence is about 2.4%. So let's do, let's do some math here. So patients who fail Nexus and Canadian C-spine rule will actually have a higher prevalence, which approximates about 4%. So these patients, by definition, will have a moderate pretest probability. So using plain films in this group, in every 100 patients, you'll end up missing one injury. And in every 200 patients, you'll end up missing one unstable injury. So you might say, what's a big deal? So I'm avoiding 99 CTs and missing one case. OK. So remember, in the study I just mentioned earlier, they excluded 75% of patients because they did not have perfect plain films. So what you'll end up doing is 
you're excluding 75% of these 99 patients because you'll end up with inadequate films. And what's going to end up happening? You're going to get a CT spine, spine on them. And now we expose them to two studies. So what you're trying to do in the first place is to avoid ex extra radiation. You ended up doubling it. And it gets worse. So it's not only about the bony abnormalities. So any patient who have a loss of the cervical lordosis of the spine will end up getting a CT. Any soft tissue abnormality will end up getting a CT because all these are considered inadequacies. If that's, that's not convincing enough, let's look at another study. This is a study published in the Medical Physics Journal in 2009, and they, liked, they tried to answer the same question. They used a decision analysis model to determine the relative benefit-risk ratio. They calculated lifetime risk of cancer, the organ radiation doses, and risk of paralysis. And what they included is that CT has higher diagnostic accuracy, which counterbalances the increase in the radiation dose. And CT utilization is justified, and you should abandon X-ray screening. Still not convinced? Let's look at another one. So this is uh, the guidelines published in 2009 in the Journal of Trauma and uh, published by the Eastern Association for Tr uh, Surgery of Trauma. And in this uh, paper, they come up with levels of evidence. So CT is the primary screening modality, and they label that as level 2 evidence. Also a level 2 evidence is that plain uh, radiographs contribute no additional information and should not be obtained. And in their meta-analysis, they, they, they used multiple studies, and most of them, at best, you know, sensitivity of 65% for plain films. And in the pool sensitivity, you know, they hardly exceed 50%, 50%. So very poor sensitivity for plain films. So now, what do you think? So take-home message is plain films, missed injuries, you should abandon them, nexus and C-spine rerolls if they're negative. Patient, your patient does not need imaging. If they're positive, your patient falls automatically in a moderate to high pretest probability, and they need a CT, not plain films. So you should get with the times and abandon your plain films because they're old school, and this is what your patient should be getting. CT scans with three axis reconstructions. So keep calm and say yes. Thank you. <laughs> Let's start and look at the no section. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Fauzi Abouyakin, he's the director of the outpatient clinics and emergency department, uh, director of chief of accidents and emergency specialty in the Ministry of Health in Jordan. Uh, he has uh, a vast experience in disasters, so he may be the best person to tell us about CT scans, and let's see if he can really compile the evidence of no. Assalamu alaikum wa uh, actually, I made some changes in my lecture, so let's start. Uh, play, play. So 30% of trauma patients who present to the emergency department have a cervical injury. 10 to 20% from injured, head injured patient have also C-spine injuries. 17 are missed or delayed which lead to uh, some problem or some neuro deficit. Predominantly have uh, uh, most cervical spine fracture occur in the two level, C2 and C5, uh, C6 to 7. Also one, one and a half of these fracture have in C6 to C7. So there are many classification, hyperextension type, rotational type, mixed, axial loading, stable, unstable, major or ma minor. We'll talk about the unstable fracture. You know most of them. Uh, flexion injury, unstable wedge fracture, which anterior and posterior uh, ligament injured, uh, unilateral interface dislocation, bilateral uh, flexion tear drop, extension injuries, hangman, extension tear drop also. All of these, open mouth, axial with Jefferson fracture, all of these are good, but we still have something missed. Here are 22 years old female falling in the ice and have some uh, neuro deficit, lower extremity para, uh, paraplesis and upper extremity weakness. Suspected central cord injury, radiographic was being normal. CT scan, some widening here and no clear evidence of anything. Unilateral, also 20 years old male, 
who had roll over motor vehicle accident on physical exam was minimal neuro deficit here some uh, rotational of the shortening of the spinatus and uh, some malalignment here but some uh, displacement anteriorly of the vertebra but we still have some something missing in the axial view we have uh, inverted hamburger sign here but also we have something uh, something m missing here so uh, the finding also in the other fracture mal in the other fracture mal alignment was some bony fragment bilateral inverted hamburger uh, sign also so all of these we have some something missing we just talking about the bone but there are some neuro deficit here so I will expand here to the hangman fracture. We just can talk here about the distance, periodontal distance, and we see the linear fracture here, 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 and here. But we're still missing something also here. Hyperextension, we see minimal here, protrusion of the disc, open mouth fracture we call it, vacuum phenomena, but we're still missing something also here. Here also we have displacement and anterior vertebral line fracture. Also we have some missing there. Here periodontal abscess. Actually the 3D is more advanced and more benefit. We, we know there are some types, but we have also missing something. The incontinu uh, incontinuosity of the ring also we, ha we can see here. But if they are, if the X-ray is normal or free or you cannot see anything, that means there are no fracture. The, they are, uh, they are not equal. If the CT scan is normal, that doesn't mean there are no spinal cord injury. So always we need, if we order the CT scan, we need MRI. So no for CT scan and yes for MRI. I'm, I'm seeing the debate really in, in fire here. So we're not doing x-rays anymore, we're gonna do an MRI. Excellent, so who's with MRI and the ED? Oh, two hands, excellent. It seems that the trend is gonna go that way. Sooner or later, we're gonna find ourselves doing MRIs from ER. So if you're not prepared, please be prepared. All right, thank you very much.